Hey, this is Matt Whitmer from Brady Precision. In this video, we're taking a look at the new Honeywell Optimizer Advanced Controller. We just got a whole bunch of these in stock, our first shipment of them. Uh, so we figured, hey, uh, might be time to give a quick little overview here on the YouTube channel. And we'll be doing uh, a lot more content on these controllers going forward, unboxings, uh, actual hands-on, how you do certain things, um, all that is coming. But in this video, we're just going to do a quick overview of what the controller is, what it can do, and uh, why it might be interesting for you if you do Honeywell. So let's jump in. So if you aren't already familiar, uh, or you've been a little bit confused with how you've seen this optimizer name come up, uh, Honeywell has done away with the web's uh, moniker for their products, and it is now Optimizer. So our typical Niagara Workbench Supervisor are now referred to as Optimizer, Workbench, and Supervisor instead of webs. And uh, we've also got a whole other line of, or we've got a whole line of controllers, excuse me, uh, that follow that Optimizer uh, name as well. We've got this uh, Optimizer Advanced Controller that we're going to be talking about. And then we've also got the Optimizer Unitary Controllers and VAV Controllers, uh, which have been around for a little while now. So what is the Optimizer Advanced Controller? Uh, it is a plant controller that's built on Niagara. It also has the ability to uh, do some integration as well as a part of it. Sort of the nice thing that comes along with it being built uh, on Niagara. It's programmable using all the standard tools that you would be uh, used to using in the Honeywell world and in the uh, Niagara world. Uh, it's expandable uh, I.O. using Panel Bus. It has up to four isolated RS-45 ports. We've got an RJ-11 port for an HDMI, or excuse me, an HMI, uh, which is what we're looking at here. And then uh, the controller itself has a uh, isolated Ethernet port, as well as three additional Ethernet ports that are switched. And then the controller supports BACnet SC. We're seeing um, a little bit more uh, uptake of BACnet SC. Comes up a little bit more than it used to. Um, and it has a five-year warranty when it is used in a full Honeywell BMS system. Another thing to note is that this controller also meets the specifications for ISA 62243, uh, Security Level 2, which is a specification for cybersecurity in the um, control world, in our world. So hardware-wise, what are we looking at on the uh, Optimizer Advanced? It uses a quad-core ARM processor, um, slightly slower than what's in the 9000, but still a significant upgrade from... Uh, the 8000 and what you would have seen in any other uh, planned controller um, processors. We've got 2 gigs of RAM built in, <coughs> excuse me, and 8 gigs of flash memory as well. Uh, we've got, like I mentioned with the Ethernet ports, one port's isolated. That's sort of our, our normal interface with the controller. And then we've got three switch ports. These um, support daisy chaining as well because they are switched. There's actually a switch chip in the controller. And then we've got up to four RS-45 serial ports. These have uh, multicolored LEDs that give you operational status, and they are is all isolated from one another. And then we've got the niceties of uh, installation. Uh, these can be wall-mounted wall or your typical DIN rail uh, mounting. So these run full Niagara, uh, which means you need to be using uh, 410U5 or 412U2 uh, in order to use the controllers. Those are the minimums. Um, same programming as a Jace or a Cyber 50. For the operating system underneath the covers here, you're never really going to touch this, but it's good to know. It uses a Linux operating system instead of QNX. This is the way that uh, Tritium has moved with the 9000 as well. And then we get all of the normal supported protocols that you would typically see um, with a Niagara installation. Uh, one interesting thing to note is that uh, this controller does support LAN uh, using the IF LAN 2 uh, little adapter. We'll, I'll mention that a little bit later on, but it uses the uh, USB-C port in order to uh, get over to that converter. But it does support LAN. 
And then we also have this uh, intelligent status LED, and the LED does the green, yellow, and red, depending on um, what our status is. Uh, it can give you a little bit more information than just a typical, you know, solid or off, that kind of thing. So as a comparison with uh, the 8000, the 9000, and the optimizer, you can see compared to the 9000, we're looking at a slightly slower processor. Um, I don't know that we're, you would really notice a difference with that. Um, same operating system, same memory, same onboard storage. We don't have uh, the ability to use an SD card uh, on the optimizer. Um, we can do up to four uh, RS-45 ports. Uh, no USB backup. Uh, we Ethernet ports, we've got that switched uh, three ports on here that we don't get on any of the normal JSIS. And then we've got uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth coming later on, and the debug port on the Optimizer Advanced is not a USB to serial conversion. It's actually USB, and then it shows up as an Ethernet port on your computer when you plug into that USB so that you can connect to the controller over Ethernet. So ordering right now, we've got two part numbers uh, you can see here, and this is the breakdown of how those part numbers work. Um, I won't go fully into detail on those, but you can see we've got right now uh, two part numbers on the actual hardware itself. And then obviously, since it runs Niagara, we've got Niagara licensing. Um, you need a Niagara license, a core license, obviously, uh, and these licenses uh, have two different parts to sort of keep in mind, the first of which is the number of devices that you're going to be um, integrating or talking to, and then the number of panel bus points that you're going to be bringing in as well. Um, so just keep both of those things in mind when you're uh, specking out your license Another thing to note is that the panel bus I.O. does not count towards your de device limit. It is a separate sort of uh, bucket of points that you're going to be looking at. And then there are upgrade licenses that are available should you install a controller, one of these uh, in the field, and then maybe need some more panel bus points later on. You can upgrade your license uh, using those two part numbers there. And then you can do the same thing, obviously, as we're all used to with JSIS, the normal global capacity device point, global point capacity upgrades are available. And then we have our normal SMAs. So that is all the licensing. Now we get into the HMI, uh, two different flavors. So we've got the DIN rail mount version, and then we have a wall mount version. Like I previously mentioned, these uh, connect to the controller using an RJ11 connection, um, and you get a whole bunch of features sort of automatically with them. Uh, you get uh, a fast access list, which gives you the ability to, like, favorite points, essentially, um, so that you can very quickly see those points uh, on a single screen. You can view and al acknowledge alarms. You can create and modify backnet schedules. Uh, you can look at your points, see what points are in manual or um, handoff auto, that kind of thing. Um, and then there's a user login as well so that you can prevent somebody who's not authorized from getting into any of these uh, pieces. We'll have a deeper dive into the HMI here in the future, um, hands-on, that kind of thing. Um, but that is good to know on that. So now we get into the I.O. modules for the advanced um, they use the panel bus protocol. They have these, um, what they call touch flake connections for easy installation on the sides. So you can see these little, um, pads essentially on each side of the IO and that's how it talks to, um, the controller and it talks through other IO modules. The terminals are all color coded based on what they are. Um, you've got handoff auto overrides on the display option models. Um, so you've got a little knob that you can control um, what your outputs are doing, um, that kind of thing, uh, and see all of those statuses directly on the display. Then you've got status LEDs for diagnostics, so an operational LED, uh, RS-45 comm uh, LED, and then a service and uh, alarm LED. 
and then we've got easy commissioning, obviously, on the HOA models with the display. Um, oops. You can override and test your outputs, um, and you can do this with or without the controller actually uh, connected and communicating. So you can use up to 64 of these I.O. modules per panel bus channel, and then 16 I.O. modules per model type. Um, all of the RS-45s are supported for usage for the I.O. modules, so that means uh, the RS-45 1 through 4, depending on which model you get, um, they all support the I.O. modules. And then there's also a separate channel um, specifically set aside for those touch flakes um, that are built into the controller directly. So here's all of our models of I.O. modules. Uh, we've got six of them. We've got a 16 uh, UIO with HOA, a 16 UIO without HOA, 8DO relay with HOA, 8DO without HOA, 16 UI, and then a 16 DI. Um, and those last three do not have HOA. You can see the breakdown of how those part numbers work and what they mean, and then what the available part numbers are at the moment, um, and the matrix of what they all mean and what they do. Uh, I should have mentioned this earlier. This presentation um, will be linked down in the description as well as on BP Tech Center. Um, so if you haven't signed up for BP Tech Center, go over there and do that. So the next piece is uh, if you wanted to use 45 to remotely uh, mount your I.O. modules, uh, they make an adapter that makes that possible. It basically takes the flake connections and breaks them out into uh, terminal blocks that you can just wire up as you would um, normally. So our maximum... Uh, and, and I should say, this brings out power and communication, so for RS-45 as well as the 24 volts that you need for the uh, for the I.O. modules. Our max uh, cable length for the uh, power is going to be 328 feet, and the max RS-45 comms cable length is uh, 2,600 feet. Um, and then one end of all of this needs to be utilizing the end cover 10 which is a protective end cover and it has built-in uh, end of line termination and each of the uh, advanced controllers includes one of these end covers as i mentioned way earlier on these controllers are also capable of doing lon uh, the if 10 or if lon 2 USB FT10 LonWorks interface will get that done for you. The LonWorks driver is included on the controller. Uh, you would just need this adapter, hook it up with uh, USB-C to micro USB cable, and uh, you would be off and running. So that does it for basically the this overview of the Optimizer Advanced. Not as quick as I hope because there's a lot to cram in here. There's a lot of functionality. There's a lot of new parts. Um, so if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. Uh, if you haven't already, like and subscribe. And we'll see you in the new year. Uh, have a happy and successful 2024. Thanks.